Hi there, traders. This is Brad Goodwill with the FX Market Insight. All right, now as we come into uh, Tuesday's trading, it's a good time to start really focusing on your uh, technical levels. Now, I had a good question yesterday. Now, why are we going through the technical levels each day? Well, what we're doing is we're pretty much fishing. Okay, you're going fishing, looking for, for levels that stand out and see if any of the major currency pairs in particular have very good technical levels close because that could potentially lead us into an entry level. Okay, that's the first part of business that you should be looking at. The Aussie dollar has been sort of trading sideways just on an hourly perspective. Um, the trend line, just two touches. So to me, that's not seriously solid. And that's what we're really looking for. Trend lines that have touched the, uh, or the currency's touched at least three times. Over here, dollar yen sideways. Uh, Kiwi just two, sort of drifting lower, but now it's just trading sideways as well. Um, Euro, we've got a couple of touches here, one, two, and not quite the third yet. I think it will be trading sideways as we move in to the um, major part of the trading week. And that's primarily because we've got um, yeah, a lot of really beefy uh, Eurozone numbers, uh, CPI numbers, GDP uh, for Germany and uh, Eurozone. Now, actually, funnily enough, Brexit, which is the, the craziest currency pair at the moment, I mean, Sterling, which is, you know, Brexit is impacting it sort of randomly. It's got the best technical setup on the top side, and I'm really thinking about just placing a uh, stop entry on the top side. We've got three good touches there. There will be a buildup of stop losses above that trend line. So potentially, that is a, uh, just a technical trade that we can put on, on the expectation that we do get some um, positive news about a Brexit deal. At this point, you see all the uh, fluctuations. Um, they are quite large, uh, and they are very random. So. If you are looking to place that sort of strategy, make sure you've got a pretty tight stop loss and a trailing stop on that as well. Dollar CAD, well, the CAD, I mean, it's ever since the Bank of Canada raised rates last week, it's been on the back foot. Oil has dropped another buck, putting a bit more upward pressure on Dollar CAD and also the equity markets, uh, you know, just ruffling a few feathers, keeping a few traders out of the loop at the moment. Now, if we just come across, let me just have a look at the dollar index before I tell you what's been moving these currencies around. Okay, you've got, um, well, the dollar index, there's been no major change, right, to start the week. Um, bit of a drift off on Friday, now sort of sideways, if anything, slightly up. Equity markets, still nervous, got the nervous nellies, and that's sort of putting, you know, the whole global growth, it's almost like a buildup of geopolitical issues over like six or eight months. He's starting to weigh on everything. Um, and the US dollar, this is very important too. There's a, there's a report out on Bloomberg that um, dollar yuan has continued to uh, rally, which means a weaker Chinese currency. Uh, Bloomberg put out a report saying that um, uh, unless there's some sort of resolution with China, that China comes to the table and does a deal, that uh, the US will put tariffs on all the remaining goods, right, in December, which will hit them sort of, pretty much February next year. So that saw dollar one move to the top side, 6.97.5. Now we've got, um, well, it's gonna be interesting when it hits seven, does it just blow through by 20 cents? Uh, I'd say the Chinese government will let that go if that's the case. Now, so we've got, so we've had a look at the technical levels, right? Okay, so if we just have a look here, just there were some slightly stronger PCE numbers too. Um, if I just come across, and have a look here, the personal consumption numbers, okay, uh, the real numbers, um, slightly stronger, okay, that's a slightly sort of inflationary number, that sort of added to the slightly sort of uh, more stable uh, US dollar. But when we come back into looking at the market overall, now we've seen the technical levels, you come back into the MyFX Trading Hub, now we're starting to look for, okay, identify the market trading conditions. Well, geopolitics are dominating, but this is where it's about to change. The upcoming events coming up for this week is, is quite massive, all right? And it starts today with the Eurozone GDP numbers um, and the, uh, you've got the German prelim CPI numbers as well and US consumer confidence. And that runs into um, Bank of Canada Governor Polos speaking as well. Now, just have a look at this because when you are looking at the fundamentals, we're looking for fundamental direction. Okay, and this is where the major components of the uh, overall snapshot come into play. Now, this is technicals and um, fundamentals. Now, uh, fundamentally, Euro is quite sort of neutral, but it has drifted off overnight 
you know, about 30, 40 points. Now, Angela Merkel, or Angela, as many people say, uh, has said she's not going to um, uh, sit up for a re-election for the CDU party. Now, she is still Chancellor, but that just puts a negative, a little bit of a negative spin on the, on the political scene in Germany. I mean, she's been around for um, about 12 or 13 years, so that could, uh, you know, just put a little bit of downward pressure on Euro. So technically, Euro's still going down. And fundamentally, it's pretty neutral with a slight sort of tinge of bearishness with, say, Merkel com coming out, as well as that Italian budget issue, which still doesn't appear to be resolved at this point. The US dollar, bullish, uh, bullish central bank, the, uh, those PCE numbers, the Fed are still expected to raise rates in December. Uh, to me, that's a bullish tone. And technically, uh, the US dollar index is still moving to the top side on all time frames. So the US dollar, it's got direction, or the dollar index, even though it's that dollar index uh, direction is probably coming from these two pairs at the top, which make up, you know, close to 70% of the, of the dollar basket. Um, the other currencies are all pretty much trading sideways. Aussie, Kiwi, dollar yen, dollar CAD. Uh, the Swissy being neutral, okay, it's, it's, it's got a very bullish US dollar picture on it. Uh, I actually sort of like the look at that as well. But let me just come back in here. Another good question from yesterday was, okay, you've got sterling is sideways, but it's moving lower. That's a really good point, right? So if you come in and if you click on the, um, the chart here, uh, you'll come to the daily analysis summary. And what you'll find is uh, some more details here. Now, the central bank to me, with inflation above 2.4%, they are hawkish. Sentiment has got to be towards... Uh, potential interest rate hike. Now, there's no hike expected from the Bank of England this week. Uh, there's, there's Brexit going on. There's too many other things. The technical picture, absolutely, it is bearish. Uh, but mixed, when I've got mixed fundamentals and mixed technicals, to me, that means sideways. And that doesn't necessarily mean the currency moves sideways. It means it can move anywhere. Right? It can move up or down, uh, and then you have to follow the sort of follow the action. Unfortunately, with this pair, it's pretty much more to do with uh, Brexit than anything else. And that's why that picture is confusing. And that's why we've got uh, the technicals here pointing down. That's all Brexit, right? You take Brexit out of this, the central bank, the strong fundamentals in, in sterling dominate, and this thing will be up, okay? So at the moment, that's, that's where that balance comes in. So I just want you to understand that. So when we're looking at these pairs, right? So and this is where you piece it all together. So you've yeah, got a bit of, bit of a bearish tone in uh, Euro and all these other pairs sideways. Well, this is where the data really comes back into play, right? This is where you've got to connect the dots, okay? You're looking at these pairs and you go, oh, well, out of all those pairs, Euro, the Euro has got a bit of a bearish sentiment, yeah, because it's technically going down. Oh, wow, we've got Euro numbers here, right? Join the dots. We get weak GDP flash estimate numbers and weak German and or weak German CPI. Euro will slide lower because that's the general direction of the currency at the moment, okay? It's down. Weak numbers, that's a good trading opportunity, right? You've got to be sort of focusing on this. So at the same point, US consumer confidence numbers, okay? If these numbers are strong, once again, that pushes the euro down. So if we get a situation here, this is where things can really add up very quickly. These numbers could all line up. We get weak German GDP, we get weak, sorry, German CPI, Eurozone GDP, and we get strong US uh, consumer confidence numbers. That all points to a lower euro, that's where you want to be looking to trade. Okay, when we come back down to look at um, Paul Oz, now he is the head of the central bank, so it's very important. But, you know, this to me, the uh, he was already hawkish last week coming out of the Bank of Canada meeting. We've got a very weird picture here as far as some of the fundamentals uh, have slipped off the page a bit. Um, inflation is sort of all over the place and now we've got oil dropping. There's too many components impacting CAD, but I'll still be watching Polo's speak there as well. So to me, what can we do today? Like it's, it's all about sort of joining the dots, as I said. So you're looking at the major pairs, um, identifying the market conditions and seeing which ones have the best opportunities. So when you bring it back to uh, the technical picture, right, to me, Euro, which has a, a pretty nice looking sort of chart, we've got some entry levels here on the top side and the downside. You want to focus on these Eurozone and German numbers and the US consumer confidence numbers because we could get a trading opportunity. At this point, 
uh, since the 24th. It's pretty much been trading sideways in a, in a pretty decent range. Um, these, these numbers may give us a chance to look at the top side. To me, the best trade is on the downside because that's the sort of overall general technical direction for Euro. All right, that's, that's my sort of take on it. Now, one thing that you can do and you should always check is if you come back to the general news, okay, you want to have a look at, just, just confirm what's going through the market. Um, and this is where I sort of probably meant to take you earlier. Dollar gains on Euro Merkel exit news, US data helps. So as I said, slightly better PCE data. And Angela Merkel not looking to um, be re-elected as head of the CDU party. I mean, politics in Germany and the Eurozone is pretty messy at the moment. I can understand why she's pulling out of that. Uh, and the rest of the stuff, um, now we've got uh, Sterling, you know, Brexit hanging over that. And they're sort of just saying, you know, dollar CAD um, weakens because oil sliding, but there's not much else going on. Um, Wall Street drops. Just keep an eye on these equity markets. This story could build up. And if, if Trump does bring more tariffs to China, that may be enough to uh, scare off a, uh, a few traders who are holding on to equities. And we may see that drift, drift into the uh, US dollar. So just keep an eye on the equity markets. As I said, the dollar index, nice steady move to the top side. Dollar one is the odd one out here. Um, don't forget, this was just a, a, a rumoured story in Bloomberg that they were going to introduce more tariffs in December. Um, who knows about that? But this currency continues to go to the top side, and I think it should. So that's where the, uh, the main action is going to be. So for the Asian session, guys, I'm not expecting a hell of a lot just at the moment. Um, and this is actually one thing I wanted to say to you as well. Just have a look. Just be patient. This is such a solid week of economic data. So... Of course, today we've got a whole bunch of things that could really impact definitely the euro um, big time. And then you come back down as we go through the week. Uh, we've got a big day in the uh, Asian session on Wednesday, coming up with the ANZ business numbers, Aussie CPI, and um, uh, the Chinese manufacturing numbers. Maybe we'll see some impact from those earlier tariffs. And then you come back into the eurozone flush estimate, CAD GDP. Uh, we've even got uh, Swiss National Bank Chairman Jordan speaking. That's a rare event. You want to make sure that uh, you are looking at that. And then that rolls into an even more action-packed uh, week with, with the you have the uh, the Caxon. That's not exactly correct pronunciation, but some other manufacturing numbers uh, out of China. The Bank of England followed up by Carney, and then the ISM manufacturing numbers, Aussie retail sales. And last but not least, the US uh, non-farm payrolls and, in, and Canadian employment numbers. So this is a huge week. There's no need to run in, start looking for trouble too early. We've got the technical levels on the charts. We know when the currency is going to potentially take off around these numbers. So pace yourself. Look at the key numbers for your time zone. Don't chase everything. And then try and pick them off as we go through. And as I said, you're really focusing on the pairs here that have clear direction. To me, dollar index, euro, dollar Swiss. Uh, funnily enough, these numbers that are being released are key numbers that will give potentially the, all these currencies uh, direction. Dollar yen will just be drifting along. We do have the Bank of uh, Japan this week. Um, they have a tentative time. That's why it's not on the calendar because there's no set time for it. But that, that could come into play. So these other currencies definitely uh, will be ignited. I would say if we get any variance, they will no longer be sideways. We will have clear direction. That's why this week's a really good week to be trading. All right, guys, that's it for me. Um, as I said, just focus uh, to me, the euro is a standout today. Uh, I think that's where the best opportunity is. So keep an eye on the uh, eurozone and, and German premium numbers and the US consumer confidence numbers. That's the uh, best potential I can see. All right, guys, have a good trade day. We'll catch you in the trade zone. Cheerio.